Mr. Mahuta, delegation from New Zealand, rekan-rekan media yang saya hormati. First of all, I would like to once again warmly welcome Minister Mahuta to Indonesia. Rekan-rekan media yang saya hormati, minggu lalu saya menerima kunjungan Menteri Luar Negeri Malaysia, Australia, dan Inggris dan merupakan suatu kehormatan bagi saya pada hari ini menerima kunjungan teman baik saya Menteri Luar Negeri Selandia Baru Nanaya Mahuta. Naumai Haire Mai. Selamat datang di Jakarta Menlu Mahuta. Kunjungan ini merupakan kunjungan pertama Menlu Mahuta ke luar negeri sebagai Menteri Luar Negeri. Rekan-rekan media yang saya hormati, Selandia Baru adalah mitra penting Indonesia di kawasan Pasifik. Kedua negara telah memiliki kemitraan komprehensif sejak 2018. Kemitraan ini telah menjadi fondasi kuat dalam upaya kedua negara untuk terus meningkatkan kerjasama, termasuk di masa sulit di tengah pandemi COVID-19. Tentunya kemitraan ini didasarkan pada azas saling menguntungkan, saling menghormati dan menghormati kedaulatan serta integritas wilayah. Pertemuan Ten Joint Ministerial Commission yang kami pimpin berdua telah berlangsung sangat terbuka, bersahabat dan konstruktif. Dan dalam pertemuan saya membahas beberapa isu penting. Antara lain, pertama, saya sampaikan selamat atas ketuaan Selandia Baru pada APEC. Dan selama keketuaan tersebut, Indonesia terus aktif berpartisipasi dan menyampaikan masukannya. Kedua, saya juga menekankan pentingnya kedua negara berkolaborasi memajukan kerjasama di Pasifik. Saya sampaikan apresiasi dukungan Selandia Baru terhadap pelaksanaan Pacific Exposition kedua yang berlangsung 27-30 Oktober yang lalu dan telah dikunjungi 11.000 orang yaitu kenaikan 50% dibanding expo pertama di Auckland dengan transaksi bisnis mencapai 104 juta US dollar yang merupakan kenaikan 48% dari expo pertama. Masih dalam konteks kerjasama Pasifik, saya juga menjelaskan bahwa Indonesia memiliki perhatian besar terhadap Pasifik dan negara kepulauan kecil selama keketuaan Indonesia di G20. Wakil dari Pasifik akan diundang dalam presidensi G20 Indonesia. Ketiga, saya sambut baik peningkatan kerjasama kesehatan yang telah dilakukan secara pande selama pandemi. Sejauh ini, Selandia Baru telah memberikan dukungan kepada Indonesia baik berupa vaksin, ventilators, rapid test, dan juga dukungan untuk Eggman Institute. Dalam konteks kesehatan, saya juga sampaikan bahwa isu ini akan menjadi salah satu prioritas presidensi Indonesia di G20. Dan kita memiliki posisi yang sama mengenai pentingnya kesetaraan akses terhadap vaksin bagi semua negara. Keempat, kerjasama percepatan pemulihan ekonomi. Tentunya perdagangan dan investasi selalu menjadi kunci dalam ekonomi. Bulan September lalu, tren perdagangan bilateral naik 37 persen year-on-year dan mencapai 1,25 miliar US dollar. Kerja keras masih diperlukan untuk mencapai target 2,8 miliar US dollar di tahun 2024. Dan saya sampaikan pentingnya perdagangan bilateral yang lebih seimbang. Oleh karena itu, saya meminta kepada Selandia Baru untuk dapat membuka akses pasar bagi produk buah tropis Indonesia dan penguatan investasi dan program peningkatan kapasitas di bidang pertanian, peternakan di Indonesia. Dan saya berharap kerjasama perdagangan seperti ASEAN, Australia, New Zealand, Free Trade Agreement, dan ASEP dapat dimanfaatkan untuk mendorong perdagangan uh, dan investasi. Kelima, Selanda, Selandia Baru dapat menjadi mitra di bidang transisi energi. Salah satu kerjasama yang dapat terus dikembangkan adalah di bidang geothermal. Kemitraan di bidang energi telah ditunjukkan antara lain melalui pembangunan Flores Geothermal Island di Nusa Tenggara Barat dan pembangunan pipeline di Maluku dalam kerangka 
New Zealand Maluku Access to Renewable Energy Support. Rekan-rekan media yang saya hormati, kita juga melakukan diskusi mengenai beberapa isu kawasan dan dunia. Saya tekankan posisi Indonesia yang ingin melihat Indo-Pasifik sebagai kawasan damai dan sejahtera dengan cara membangun kerjasama yang inklusif. Dalam konteks inilah, Indonesia menginisiasi ASEAN Outlook on the Indo-Pacific dan Indonesia mengajak Selandia Baru untuk bermitra dengan ASEAN dalam memajukan implementasi empat prioritas kerjasama, yaitu di bidang maritim, konektivitas, SDGs, perdagangan, dan investasi dalam konteks ASEAN Outlook on the Indo-Pacific. Kita juga membahas situasi Myanmar, dan saya tekankan kembali posisi konsisten Indonesia. Penting bahwa Five Point of Consensus untuk diimplementasikan, Penting demokrasi dikembalikan dalam kehidupan politik Myanmar melalui dialog yang inklusif. Penting pula dunia untuk tetap memperhatikan isu Rohingya yang menjadi semakin sulit untuk diselesaikan di tengah krisis politik di Myanmar saat ini. Rekan-rekan media demikian yang dapat saya sampaikan. Selanjutnya dengan hormat saya mengundang Menteri Luar Negeri Mahuta untuk menyampaikan pandangannya. Minister Mahuta, please. Inga mana inga reo, tena koutou katoa. Salamat siyong. Good day and thank you uh, Minister Retno Masuri for your kind words and warm welcome. I'd like to start by thanking you for your very warm hospitality. In Aotearoa New Zealand we call that manakitanga and manakitanga is alive and well in the Indonesian people. I'm aware that hosting a visit during COVID-19 is very, very challenging. So I'd like to take the opportunity to also thank you and your team for hosting my delegation here today. Indonesia is a very important partner for Aotearoa New Zealand. I'm pleased to have been able to visit Indonesia during my first overseas trip as Minister of Foreign Affairs. I sincerely hope that I will soon have the opportunity to return your hospitality when our respective border settings allow you to visit New Zealand. I enjoyed discussing with you, Minister Marsudi, various issues of common interest between our two countries during our joint ministerial commission today. We touched on the very welcome growth in our trade and economic relationship. In the year to September 2021, two-way trade was worth 2.45 billion, up 23% from the previous year. And we know just how difficult that would have been because of COVID, but we're both keen to see that growth going forward into the future. The breadth and depth of our discussions underlines the strength of our comprehensive partnership, as well as the warmth of our close friendship. I'd like to highlight a number of key outcomes of our very productive meeting. COVID-19 continues to dominate domestic and international attention. We agreed that close international cooperation remains critical, not only to respond to the pandemic, but also as we work towards economic recovery. This has been the focus of Aotearoa New Zealand during the APEC hosting year of 2021, and I am sure that this will be one of the key priority areas for Indonesia's G20 host year. I'd also like to thank Minister Masudi for your work as co-chair of the COVAX Advanced Market Commitment Engagement Group. New Zealand has been pleased to be able to provide over 684,000 AstraZeneca doses through COVAX to Indonesia, which arrived last month. We stand with Indonesia in our joint pursuit of equitable access to vaccines mm -hmm. for all countries. I was also pleased to confirm that Aotearoa New Zealand has contributed 12.7 million in COVID-19 support to Indonesia since the start of the pandemic. We also had a rich exchange on climate change. This is another issue that requires close global cooperation. We wish Indonesia all the best in bringing this issue to the fore during your G20 host year, building on the momentum created by COP26. To support Indonesia's goals of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and its objectives of increasing the renewable energy mix and its energy supply, I'm pleased to announce six million in funding over five years in a new partnership with the Global Green Growth Institute. 
This will contrib contribute critical international support for Indonesia to accelerate its transition to reliance on renewable energy and builds on our, uh, on our other un ongoing cooperation in the renewable energy sector. Indonesia is New Zealand's largest partner for development cooperation outside of the Pacific. We will continue to build on this cooperation, including through initiatives which contribute to women's empowerment and support for Indigenous communities. Aotearoa New Zealand and Indonesia are close partners in the Indo-Pacific. I value the opportunity to exchange perspectives with Minister Marsudi and to thank her for her leadership in establishing the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. I reaffirm New Zealand's commitment to an Indo-Pacific with ASEAN at its centre and a region based on the rule of law, including the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, a region open for trade and investment, a region that's inclusive, a region where sovereignty is respected for all countries, large and small, a region that seeks peace and stability. I also took the opportunity to discuss New Zealand's focus on building resilience in the Pacific. I acknowledged Indonesia's recent hosting of the second Pacific Exposition and welcomed Indonesia's increasing and constructive role in the Pacific. Thank you. We also had a valuable discussion on Myanmar and Afghanistan where we continue to be extremely concerned about the security and human rights situation. I commend you, Minister Masudi, for the leadership you have shown to date on both these issues. Finally, I'd like to thank Indonesia for your valuable participation in APEC this year, including most recently by the President, by the President at the AELM. Aotearoa New Zealand wishes Indonesia well for your hosting of the G20 during the period of your presidency. Tēnā koutou katoa and tēnā Thank you very much. Thank you. Tēnā koutou